So you want to get a ham radio license, but which license do you need? What's the difference between each of the license types of ham radio license anyway? We'll break down the answers to these questions and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jim, N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. We're on a mission to inspire and educate the next generation of ham radio operators. When it comes to ham radio licensing, you get what you earn. The further you go along in your license journey, the more opportunities you have. Compare this to getting a driver's license. Most people get the basic, and it allows you to drive a car or a pickup. Some go on to get a commercial license to drive trucks and they earned more opportunities by learning more. Similar to driver's licenses, ham radio licenses are graduated for safety as well. This brings us to answer the question, why do I need to get a ham radio license at all? The power of ham radio at some levels will let you talk around the world. To do that, sometimes you're gonna use more power than the AM radio station in your neighborhood at night. Understanding the responsibilities of your ham radio privileges like avoiding interference with commercial broadcasters or other users, is a driving force behind ham radio license requirements. Some people may say, in a true emergency situation, I don't need a license anyway. Those are the same people who in an emergency are going to have no idea how to operate a radio or make a contact. That would be like trying to get on a racetrack your first time driving a car. There are already more than 770,000 licensed hams in the U.S. today. That's the highest in more than 25 years. That equates to about two hams for every thousand people in the U.S. They can talk with more than three million hams around the world. Each country has their own regulations around ham radio licensing. In the U.S., there are three different levels of ham license you can get today. Everyone works their way up the ladder of licensing to different levels, but you have to start with the technician class. Let's go into more detail about the three main license levels. You hear technician level hams on repeaters, you see them helping out with public service communications, or they might be using it to talk to an amateur satellite or control a drone. With a couple of small exceptions, technician level hams are limited to line of sight communications. The bulk of a technician privileges start at the 6 meter band and are focused on the most popular 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. Those are all in wavelength size, equating to 50 megahertz, 144 megahertz, and 440 megahertz. All hams have privileges for experimenting in the super high frequency area, with frequencies in the 5 to 250 gigahertz range as well, which hams use for mesh networks and other radio experiments. There's also a taste of HF included in the technician level, which you might know as the shortwave bands. Technician level hams have privileges in the Morse code section of four bands between 3 and 30 megahertz, and voice privileges between 28.3 and 28.5 megahertz HF with a maximum of 200 watts of power. Technicians can have a great communications reach. Using local repeaters, they can talk to other hams across a county, and using digital modes like D-Star, DMR, or Fusion, they can link through the internet to repeaters around the world. To become a technician level ham, you need to pass a 35 question exam on topics like safety, electronics, and basic FCC rules. It only takes 26 correct to pass, and your license is good for life as long as you renew it every 10 years. I may be biased because I think HF communications are some of the most fun you can have with ham radio, but I really do think the general class license is the sweet spot for most people's ham radio license journey. About half of hams will go on to get their general license. The general class license busts the Morse code only barrier of technician to allow operation in Morse, voice, or digital across the breadth of 12 bands covering 135 kilohertz to 29 megahertz. General privileges start in the low frequency band at 135 kilohertz, way down near the radio navigation signals. They end in the 10 meter band, just above where CB operates. 
General class hams get to crank up the power to 15, as in 1500 watts, which is the legal limit for amateur radio. What are general class hams doing with their privileges? They're bouncing signals off the atmosphere and talking around the world. They're designing radios to fit in mint tins that help measure the reflective level of the atmosphere. They practice mobile HF operations in groups like Parks on the Air, in case they need to go operate when communications go out. 44% of hams have gone on to get their general class or higher license. To do this, you take a second 35 question exam and you only need 26 correct answers to pass here too. And yes, you can usually take both the tech and general exams at the same time if you want. In addition to more rules and safety, for general, you'll dig into more electronic knowledge, like understanding digital components and calculating values of waveforms. Only one in five hams goes from general to amateur extra. They have to pass a third exam with electronics and radio frequency theory. You face a 50 question exam drawn from over 620 questions in the pool. It's typically not something you can pass by memorizing answers. Get at least 37 of 50 right and you're an amateur extra. Amateur extra privileges don't include any more power to use on the air, but they do include special exclusive frequencies to operate on HF. Extras get access to special call signs, like really short ones, that help when doing things like ham radio contesting. Extras also make great volunteer examiners because they can administer all levels of license exams. Extras who like to travel overseas can operate easily in other countries too. Many allow for an exchange of ham radio license privileges. As an amateur extra myself, I use the VE privilege the most because I really enjoy seeing people pass their ham radio exams. Let's spend a second or two on other license levels you may hear about but are no longer available for new hams. The novice and advanced levels were grandfathered around 2000 when the license levels we have today were standardized. They account for about 5% of licensed hams today. How do you get any of these ham radio licenses? It's a basic three-step process. One, start studying. Everyone has to be a technician before being a general and a general before being an extra. So work them in order. Two, take the exams. A group of mostly amateur extra hams will probably hold an in-person license exam session in your area about once a month. When you go in, you may pay a small testing fee, say $15, and you're given the exam, which usually takes about half an hour. About one in four people take the exam online from their home, to your option. Three, pay the FCC. Along with your technician level license, you'll pay a $35 fee online to the FCC. After that, the others are free upgrades. So let's recap. There are three active levels of ham radio license, starting with the mostly local technician level, the sweet spot on HF general class, and the electronics intensive amateur extra. Your first license costs a one-time payment of $35 to the FCC. You'll probably spend extra for study materials and testing fees. Think less than 100 bucks to get started. HamRadioPrep.com has detailed study information for all three license levels, including videos, quizzes, and practice exams to make sure you pass when you take the real exam. Visit us at HamRadioPrep.com to get started on your license journey. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim, N4BFR, Amateur Extra Class VE, saying from all of us at Ham Radio Prep, we hope to hear you on the air soon.